So in this video, I want to talk about the ambition of Oda Nobuna. I think that's how you pronounce it. Now, this is an anime that came back in July of 2012 based on a light novel and at 12 episodes. And currently, it is still on Crunchyroll. Currently, don't know what will happen in the years, but... It's actually really funny to kind of re-watch this and look back at this. Like, it's what, been 12 years now since the anime originally came out. And I was looking at, like, the tags and everything, because I like to know what the tags are on other websites. And it has it as, like, comedy, historical, romance, and time travel. And I was kind of thinking to myself, I was like, does this classify as an isekai or not? Because it's like time travel alternative timeline which would be classified as an isekai if you think about it because again sure it's got his historical components to it but a lot of the characters have been gender swapped events end up changing now that's because again he has changed things but the genders do swap and i know that's clearly done for reasons but it did make me kind of wonder is this really just a time travel or a time travel alternative timeline spin which would technically make it an isekai it's one of those where this is the thing about the definition of isekai is that it can be used in different ways with other shows and that's why there's no real clear definition of it but if you use it in the most open-ended way you could literally classify everything as an isekai that's why it's a very slippery slope which is why I kind of wish there were more defined meaning behind it I know some people say oh no it's literally this I'm like trust me some people have come up some weird, crazy ways of interpreting what an isekai is. Other than people that are just completely wonkos that are like, oh, Oshinoko is an isekai. I'm like, yeah, no. That's just being stupid at that point. Reincarnation is not an isekai. So, it's an interesting anime to say the least. I think the thing that I always love going back to it for is just the crazy nature of it. And yeah, it's got some historical elements of it. Kind of reminds me of like Age of Empires kind of thing because the main protagonist definitely has some knowledge about the past, but some things kind of get spun up a little bit. But I think the only issue that I do have with the anime, the only one that's always irritated me, is that, yeah, he comes from the future. He knows things. He's proven to people that he is from the future, that he has this knowledge but that's one, the only really redeeming part about him. He doesn't have any real knowledge that he can use from his past life. Like, again, he's been educated. He's from, he's gone to school. So he should have some knowledge in certain things that people don't have in that time. Like, he does bring up some cooking things and all that for marketing. But I feel like they don't utilize his knowledge of the future enough in a way that could really give him an advantage and make him feel like he's an asset. And even then, a lot of the times, they kind of just ignore anything he says as soon as he says something. It's like, hey, this is something that happens. And they're like, yeah, 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 no, we don't, we don't care, monkey. Be gone. And it's like, uh, hello? And I get that the point of that is for the comedic aspect of it, but it does kind of annoy me a little bit because let's be real here, if the female protagonist, which is the main love interest for him, really wanted to take taking Japan over serious, she would be utilizing his knowledge as best as possible. That's the only gripe I have. But if you don't take the anime actually serious and realize that it's mainly just there for a comedy romance, then yeah, that's all it's really there for. So it doesn't really matter that they kind of treat him like a monkey and they kind of kick kick him to the curb whenever they feel like it and whenever it's convenient for the story it still has its charm i generally still really enjoy it but i feel like the series could just turn into a harem at the end because some of, i feel like more than one girl kind of likes him and s slowly some of the other girls kind of start to like him but i am kind of curious if the story was to continue and again i haven't read the source material so i don't really know I do wonder if it just turns into a glorified harem at the end, because it's kind of what he wants. It's the one thing that he's kind of pushing for, is having all these maidens and all that, and there's not many other male characters in the story other than a couple here and there, so I feel like he's the one that kind of gets all the girls to kind of fall for him, and I feel like that's where the story is kind of genuinely going. I still really enjoy it, and that's the thing. It's one of those where it's very trashy, and I had this debate with someone else in the comments when I was talking about another anime where I was like, underrated trash. 
and they were getting like angry at me saying, oh, you can't call something trash if you unironically like it and all that. And I'm like, well, yeah, I can. Because I can enjoy something and realize that there are some elements in it that are very trashy. It's like one of those, like, you watch those comedies that you know are just ridiculous and stupid in its nature, but it's just fun to just sometimes turn off your brain and just enjoy the stupidness of it. And that's why I call it, like, trashy. It's, it's, it's trashy, but it's fun at the same time. And I know a lot of people will try and be really technical and pull out the thing and go, well, actually, that's not how it functions. It doesn't matter if it functions exactly like that. I think what really it's about is that feeling that you get, that you're like, oh, it's like going to Macca's knowing that it's not healthy for you, but you don't really care because it just tastes really good. That kind of trashy. That, and it's not exactly, it's, it's a bit of a bad analogy in the sense, but most people understand what I'm getting there. Yes, it's got some stupid elements. Yes, it's got those elements of the harem, the kicking him to the curb. They could totally utilize his powers more or his knowledge more and make a really like compelling, deep story where he's become this sort of strategist and stuff. But that's not what it's about. It's just about being stupid, silly, fun, and having that charismatic, romantic component to it. That's what I go for. That's what I come to it. That's why I always rewatch it. Because if it was really bad, that it was unenjoyable, then yeah, I wouldn't rewatch it. But it is trashy in its elements, but it's got something charming about it. And that's one of the things about a lot of those older animes is that some of them are really trashy in what they what elements they have in there, but they're just so fun to just watch and just turn your brain off. Because sometimes there are some animes that you do want to turn your brain on for and you really want to enjoy the deep, the philosophical, the analytical, the deep romance or the world building and all that kind of stuff. But there are just some that you just want to turn your brain off and be like, yep, mindless stupidity, let's enjoy it and just have fun. And that's the thing with me when it comes to anime. There are some animes where, and some moments where I do want to just turn my brain on and really like absorb all of these like world building character building things for and then you have moments like this anime where I just want to turn my brain off and just be like yep let's just have some fun and that's what the anime does best at now as far as the season two goes where that story can go I mean again there is more to the history itself of unifying Japan and Absolutely, there's clearly more story to it. I just don't know much about the source material other than that in itself, is that there is more to it. It is based on a light novel. I don't ever, 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 ever seen it getting a remake or a sequel. Just to be very clear there before someone asks that question, because I know one person's going to ask that question as if it's meant to be like a serious question. It's just like, no, it's never going to happen. It was a source material seller. That's what most animes were done back then. I mean, it's been 12 years now. And yeah, you could say, oh, but look at Spice and Wolf. But that's a very different series. This was just primarily used to be used as a source material seller. And even if it did get a remake, and that would be what you would probably get over a sequel... I don't think it would really achieve much. It's sold what it needed to do. It did its objective back then, though it would be interesting to go check out the source material and actually read it and see what it's like. But I also have a feeling there's probably no English translation to it as well. But hey, I might give it a look afterwards just for the sake of curiosity and maybe talk about it in a future video on my main, on my news channel about what the chances are or what material there is kind of thing, if you get what I'm just when it comes to those videos. But absolutely love it for those elements i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below have you watched this anime what are your thoughts on it and what makes you enjoy it like that's the thing i want to ask what makes you enjoy this kind of anime because i think sometimes people look at these animes from like a snobbish you know ivory tower perspective and they go oh, ho, ho, what would you even like this anime for it's so unsophisticated it's like yeah but it doesn't need to be it's just stupid fun like, for me, I just like the girls and how, like, yeah, aesthetically pleasing they are, but how they've got their own charm to them. Sure, there's some tropey aspects to them, but I don't care about that. Or cliches, whatever you want to go with. But I don't care about that. It all just kind of melds together. It just is fun. And the character itself, as much as maybe they could have made him a little bit more clever, a little bit more strategical, I think him being the way he is makes sense from the comedy aspect and allowing him to be kind of the kicking like 
the punching bag, as so to say, because if he was too smart and too knowledgeable, then it would take the series too serious. And I think that's the difference. If you made him too smart, it would have to be taken too serious. And then if you make him just dumb fun and he's just a punching bag for enjoyment sense, then yeah, you're not meant to take the anime serious. And that's the thing. That's what I enjoy about it is that you're not meant to take it serious. And that's why it's good trash. So again, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.